what we're going to do today is create this awesome game, right? And as you can see, it's hands-free, right? Because this uses a special version of Scratch and something called Teachable Machine, which we can use to control the movement of this character. It's, it's pretty cool, right? How do we do it? Well, first off, you need to follow the link to this special version of Scratch, and the link is hopefully below this video. And what happens is it loads this special version of Scratch which enables us to use um, Teachable Machine with it, which is a, a Google thing, as we will see. So when it loads, it looks like this. There's a bottom, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a blue button. Click on that, because we want to use the Teachable Machine extension. And it will ask you if you want to use your webcam. If it does that, yes, you can allow it to do so. And it's important that if your device has two webcams, that you do this first before going on to Teachable Machine. More on that later. Otherwise, it just gets confused as to which camera it's supposed to be using. Anyway, I've got this dude covering my ugly face, so I'm going to move that out of the way. <laughs> they just love self-deprecating humor. And um, at the moment, the size is 100. I'm going to change that to 80 because it's a little bit big. That just gives it, theoretically, a little bit more space to, to move about uh, move about in. Um, so that's that Sprite. It's called Sprite 1. Not a great name for a Sprite. I'm going to call this dude. Just a little tip. Always name your sprites because if your game gets complicated and you end up with sprite one, two, three, four, five, you can forget which sprite is which and it gets awfully complicated. So give your sprites a name. We are going to add an apple sprite. So I click on the add sprite button and then apple. There it is. Now look at the app that the apple's the size of its face. So I'm going to shrink that to about size 50. There we go. Now with my Apple Sprite selected, really important, make sure that Apple Sprite selected, I'm going to create my Apple uh, Apple script to make the Apple move and to position it on the screen. So under control, I have got one that says start uh, when I start as a clone, right? Because we're going to create several of the same Apple as you will see later on. And when we click the green Apple, uh, the green apple, <laughs> click the green flag button, uh, uh, then uh, what we want to do is start it moving. So I'm going to broadcast a message, not message one though, I want to broadcast a new message called move apple. There we go, move apple, right mouse click, duplicate, click. There we go, so we're going to start off broadcasting this particular message. So when we receive the move apple message we want to position the apple started off in a random position on the screen so under motion i'm going to choose the one that says something like go to x and y and i want this to be random so under the operators um, tab down here i'm going to choose the one that says random pick random between 1 and 10, right mouse click duplicate, put it there, but not between 1 and 10. Um, so X position, so X is how far across it is. So if I move this to the far left, I can tell that the far left is minus 240, and the far right should be 240, the other side as well, or thereabouts. And the Y position, so at the top, it's 175. I can read that from these figures here. And if I move it to maybe not all the way to the bottom, just just above its head, maybe as a starting position, minus 35. So now when you click on this, you should find that it will put the apple in a random position. Groovy. So far, so good. Now for moving the apple. So under control, there's one that says forever. By the way, there's, there's lots of ways of, of doing what I'm doing today. So don't just think, well, this is the only way of doing it. Well, there's, it's, there's not, there's, there's all sorts of different, different ways. This is just, just how I've decided to, to um, position all the blocks to get it to work. So with my forever uh, block, I want to forever change the Y position so it moves down the screen. So under motion, there's one called change Y by. Now you might be used to using this one, move 10 steps. Now the trouble with that is the apple by default is pointing 90 degrees, that's that way. So when you do move 10 steps, it will just move this way. And you can rotate it, but to save with all that faff, all I'm going to do is just change the Y position. And I'm going to change it by about minus six. So now when I click on this, 
you'll see that it will fall to the bottom of the screen. Now, of course, when it reaches the bottom, we probably want it to go back up to the top. So under control, there's one called if, and I'm going to say that if under operators, there's one arrow here that points to the left. Do you know what that means? It means less than. So if under motion, we look at the Y position. So if the Y position is less than at the bottom, so if I just move it up a little bit and say, okay, if it's maybe more than about 170, minus 170, right? So important point there, this number is minus 170 and this arrow points to the left, which means less than. So if the Y position is less than minus 170, I'm simply going to right mouse click on this, duplicate this. I don't want all of it, I just want this. And delete. But for the Y position, now I'm going to get rid of that because I want the Y position to be the top of the screen, which is something, well, 150 is not bad actually, is it? Um, which is about 200 or thereabouts. Right, so now we've got falling apples. Well, what if we capture the arrow? So when it senses it's coll it's colliding with this guy or girl, we want it to change the score. Oh, back into my apple. Change the score and reset the apple. So control. If this little dude is so sensing, if we are touching the dude, then under variables so i'm going to make a variable click on make a variable no make a variable there it is called score so uh, this variable here uh, score will store a value in memory that we can change so i'm going to change score by one and also if i right mouse click on this and duplicate this block here can you remember what this block does this block should reset its position. Now, I have to manually move it at the moment. So you can see when I manually move it, my score is changing. All right, so that now works. Back onto my Apple script. I think that's about there, unless I think of something else. Um, other than change Y position, you could make it slightly slower. So it's minus six at the moment. I'm gonna change it to minus four. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to click onto my stage. If you want, you could add a backdrop if you know how to do that. I'm not, there's a little plus button here. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Um, but what I am going to do is make it so that when we start the game, I am going to create so lots of apples. So repeat, let's say two times. So it will create two more duplicates of this, so we end up with three apples altogether. Of course, you can play around with it and change it if you want to. You can go crazy and have 100 apples. It would probably be a little bit mad if you do that, as you probably guessed. Um, so what are we going to do? Control. I want to create a clone of apple. So we now, we've now got three apples. Right, now for the dude itself. Um, so, getting it moving, right, this is the excitable bit, exciting, excitable, exciting bit. I'm going to go onto Teachable Machine, click onto this, it will open a new tab and create a new project. Now we could make it so that we can control the position of the dude by holding up a particular object to the webcam if we wanted to, or we could make it voice controlled, so when we say left it goes left, when we say right it goes right, when we say stop it stops. But for the purpose of this project, I'm going to choose the Pose project. So we're going to teach the computer what we mean by left, what we mean by right, and what we mean by when we're not moving. So for class one, I'm going to rename this, call it left. Class two, what am I going to call that? Yes, right. Class three, what am I going to call that? Stop or middle, something like that. Now using my webcam, I am going to teach the computer what I mean by left. So I'm going to leave it to the left and create a few images. Now, don't hold, I know it says hold to record, but don't do that. Just just hold it a little bit so you don't end up with millions of uh, images. Otherwise, training the model will just take forever. So for right, I'm going to do the same for 
right. Now, of course, if any of these go wrong, you can click on the delete button to delete them. And middle, that's what I mean by middle. So once we've got a few images in there, that's all it takes. We can then train the model and away it goes. So the computer is working out what we mean by left, what we mean by right, and what we mean by when we're not moving. And just test your model, check that it works as you expect. If it doesn't, then uh, then um, go back to the first stage and um, change the images. Once you've done that, click on export model and then we can create a model that we can use with our scratch project and then click on this button that says upload my model. That might take a little bit of time so whilst we're waiting for it to do that I'm going to leave the window open and click back onto my scratch project and then I can start putting in the code for the dude. So with this little dude, when we start, I'm going to want to have a default direction. So under variables, I'm going to make a variable called direction. And this is going to help us control whether we want the sprite to move left or right or not at all. And I'm going to set direction to zero, which means don't move. Um, I don't want it to be visible here either, so I'm going to hide the variable as well. Now, under uh, events, there's one called forever. And I'm going to make it so that if the direction is, zero, is minus one, it's going to go left. If it's one, it's going to go right. Let's go back to the post project. Yes, it's finished. So I'm going to copy the link, click on copy back here then under teachable machine there's one called use model I'm just going to pop that at the, at the top and paste in the link now you have to run the project first and it will just you'll see this um, orange exclamation mark it will just load in the project uh, loading the model rather and when this goes green we know it's done that so I'm going to stop that game from running and now we can do this when model detects left these are our three classes that we created left, right, and middle. So when we detect left, I'm going to change my variable direction. Not don't want to change it by, I just want to set it there. It is set direction to I'm going to have minus one for left. You can use one, two, and three if, if you want, if that makes more sense. Or you could create what's called constants. But maybe save that for another lesson. Right now let's click duplicate. So when we receive right, I'm going to change that to one. And right mouse click duplicates. When it's on middle, I'm going to change the direction to zero. So you could probably finish it off from there, hopefully. So if, if, what do we want? Operators, if, this one with the equals, if, and we want variables, if direction is minus one, then motion we want to change x by um, say about minus six depending on how fast we want it to move and right mouse click duplicate um, when direction is one change x by six the other way right so now it should all work did I reset the score to zero at the start of this game? That's the question. I don't think I did that anywhere, did I? No, so um, I could put it on the main stage or you could put it on the dude, it doesn't matter. Um, but variables, we probably want to reset our score. So set the score variable to zero. And there we go. We've got our completed game. Right now, just before we start playing around with it, let's give it a name. So, um, Apple Project ML, ML short for machine learning, and then file save to your computer. That will then download the file so then um, we can load it back from our computer if we need to. If you're using Google Drive, this will be stored in your My Drive folder or um, no, it will be stored there, and you could also access it via your recent files tab. Um, as well. So that's it for this game. Now you could of course make this a lot better. You could make it so perhaps you have to catch certain objects and avoid others. You could perhaps have a speed setting. 
you can add a background um, you can make it so you can control it using different models so perhaps one where you hold an object up or make it voice controlled um, it's totally up to you so if you are in one of my classes then I look forward to seeing what you create with this there we go have fun bye